Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville. And you know what? We filmed this a while back in September, but I thought you might find it useful now. So those of you that haven't really um, discovered this yet, we have a couple software inspirations videos that we've put out there for you to learn the software. Now these are um, videos are put out by Debbie Lashbrook and the team at Bernina of America. Um, but we do a little teaser for you. And then if you want all of the handouts and all the information, all you have to do is go to our Bernina of Naperville website and go to Software Inspirations and purchase whichever month you want for just $5. Now you can purchase one or you can purchase all three. And also just a friendly reminder that we will be adding more of these as we go through um, the different the year next year. So, all right, let's watch from September of 2023. We are doing advanced applique this month and it's time to roll up the sleeves and get acquainted with a lot of some new tools and some familiar tools for you. If you are not really that familiar with applique, Applique is a French word, and it pretty much means to put something onto something. Uh, and in our world of sewing, it means to take a piece of fabric, place it down on a background fabric, and stitch around it. Now, there's all kinds of methods um, to do applique. There is several methods to do it by hand. There's several methods to do it hand-guided on a sewing machine. We even have some videos on our YouTube channel that talk about that as well. There's also a way that you can do applique using your Bernina embroidery software, creating simple things and advanced ones. And we're gonna work up today from simple to advanced. Now, I wanna also comment that if you are really unfamiliar with this technique and you have no idea what I'm talking about, you might wanna hop on over to our friends at OESD, which is embroideryonline.com, and peruse some of their applique pre-digitized designs. And it just starts to give you, you know, kind of like um, a way to think out of the box and how to use applique. There's even designs preloaded on your sewing machine. And you can see here, our little gnome is a perfect example of advanced applique. I'm gonna do an exercise that Debbie Lashbrook put together where um, this design is picked specifically so we can start thinking about, do we do this whole design with this advanced applique method or is this more of a skill builder thing where we're gonna do something easy and then we work up to something that requires us to think a little bit more complicated like. <laughs> but this isn't a hard project, it's just, you know, knowing what we're doing and why we're doing it. So let's get down here on the computer so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm working in my Bernina embroidery software version nine designer plus, and I wanna just show you a down and dirty technique for applique that is not advanced. And if you've not done this before, it's fairly simple and you know, I've said this before, but we can get a hundred sewists in the room and those hundred sewists are going to give you a thousand ways to do something. But one way that you can do just simple applique shapes, it doesn't matter what you pick, what kind of shape, is basically simple. So I'm going to just insert some artwork here. And for my first exercise, I'm picking this mustache. I think that this would be really funny to put on something or applique on something or a quilt label for, you know, something I'm doing for Chris or whatever. It doesn't matter. This could easily be a heart or a flower or whatever. But what I want to kind of get you into good practice of doing is making your applique picture the size that you ultimately want your applique to be. So let's just say I'm doing an eight by eight inch pot holder. I want my mustache to be no larger than six inches wide. So I've selected my picture and I can go up here to the width and I'm just gonna make that six inches. And I'm also gonna make sure that my little lock, which is gonna lock my proportions here, is keeping my mustache proportionately the right size. So this is an option where I am working from a picture. Also, 
if I am just working from a picture and I want this design exactly as it is, well, we all know when we trace around something, we might not be totally accurate. So with that in mind, rather than left click, right click, left click around the shape, I'm going to use my auto digitizing tool to recognize the shape and make it. So I'm going into my auto digitize drawer over here on the left side of my screen and I'm picking magic wand. And now I'm going to click on the mustache. This prepare bitmap image window comes up straight away and it's automatically reduced this mustache to two colors. I'm totally fine with that, so I'm going to say okay. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about is I quite often want to see closer. I want to see my design closer up. So that means that I want to either view it, view my hoop, and view my sizing to hoop, which you can see here, that has in no way made this closer. I could view it to fit. And now my mustache is totally big and I can see exactly what I'm working on. Or if you are digitizing something and you want to see it to hoop, but because you're trying to make sure everything stays within the confines of your hoop, you can actually rotate your hoop. And you can rotate your hoop in 15 degree increments until you get it completely horizontal. And now if I say to hoop, it gets a little bit larger on me. Now, of course, in this application, I just need to say to fit, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I have my magic wand tool already selected, and now as I hover my mouse over different parts of this picture, I can select different things. And for this application, I'm aiming for an applique mustache, so I'm gonna hover over the mustache, and I want that little red grid to show up. And that red grid represents that I'm going to be digitizing everything in that red grid fill. So a simple left click yields me a white mustache. Now, I don't want a fill stitch. I want this to be applique. So now I'm going to hit my selector with the left click and select the mustache. And you can see here, that I am in design view. If I press T or click this icon on my computer, I can see it in fill stitches or fuchsia to show that I've selected it. I'm just gonna stay in design view for right now. So now this is where it gets really fun when you're doing applique. I can simply collapse my auto digitize window and select the applique drawer and then convert to applique with a simple left click. And then it's pretty easy. If I wanna see what artistic view looks like, I can click on artistic view. And then over here, you can see by simply selecting this convert to applique, I have three items now in my hoop. I have pink, purpley blue, and white. And the pink is a placement line, the purple is a tack down line, and the white is the satin stitching or the cover stitching. Now, this means that I need to talk to you a little bit about how you would want to do this applique. So when we're thinking of applique, we're thinking of a couple different methods when we're doing it in our embroidery machine. One is trim in place, which I've used a million times. And trim in place works nicely if you are literally making one block with this weird shape and you don't have to make multiple ones. Pre-cut methods work really well for items where you are making a quilt and you have like 50 hearts to put on it and they're all the same size. So in that case, you can either pre-cut all of them with your scissors, you can use a Bernina cutwork tool, or you can use a cutting machine. So repetition is good for mass producing and therefore you might wanna come up with some other time-saving techniques. 
trim in place is what I do if I'm literally just making a quick little gift for somebody and I'm not going to make multiple ones. When I did my Hawaiian quilt, this is a YouTube video that we have right on our channel, Bernina of Naperville. And um, the Hawaiian quilt, I had to do four for each block and that got monotonous. So I decided that in that case, I did pre-cut those pieces and then stuck them down with the method that you're going to see today. Um, and that worked out really well, but I also showed that as a trim in place. And all it is, is do you wanna you know, stitch something where it's gonna show you where the fabric's gonna go, you put the fabric down, and you trim around it, or do you wanna just put the fabric down pre-cut and let it stitch it down? And it's just a matter of how many cool tools you wanna to get and all of those things. So when you're making an applique that's trim in place, you really need four steps. You're gonna start with the placement line, then there's gonna be a cutting line. So the placement line is gonna stitch just on your background fabric that has been hooped up in your embroidery hoop and there's no applique fabric yet. So that's just a place so that you know where to place your fabric. Then after you place your fabric in place, you're gonna stitch the cutting line. And you can see over here in this top picture that this is where the fabric has been placed and the first stitching cutting line has been performed. Then you're gonna trim away after that second line, after that cutting line, step number two, and then you're gonna tack down and then you're gonna add your cover stitching. And that is an easy trim in place method. If you are doing the cutout pattern method, like I said, where you wanna use your, you wanna pre-cut manually with scissors, you wanna use a Bernina cutwork tool or like a Silhouette Cameo or Cricut, then you're gonna do this method where you have your placement stitch, it's exactly the same. You're gonna hoop up your background fabric you're going to stitch that first placement stitch just on the background fabric. Then you're going to place your pre-cut applique shape down. It's going to tack it into place, and then it's going to do the cover stitching. And here's the options for cutting. You can literally get the template size that you need and cut with the scissors. You can use the Bernina Cutwork tool, which is our method. We use this a lot for the trim in place. Or if you have a cutting machine, you can use that. So how do we choose what kind of trimming options we want with our shape? Well, that's all in object properties. And I can right click, select my design and right click it and see object properties comes up as a choice right there. Or I can go to this page with a red chip on its shoulder and access object properties. And once I select that, I have to go to the applique tab. And this is our object properties window. And here there's all kinds of information. We have our placement line. Here we go. If we want to do a cutting line for applique, I can go ahead and tick that box. Now I'm gonna only make one mustache, so trim in place would be fine for just one mustache. Then I have tack down, and then I have my cover stitch. We can also choose the tack down options. You can get single, blanket, zigzag, or box zigzag. And it really depends on what you're choosing here based on what your cover stitch is gonna be. So for instance, if I have a box zigzag, and I'm using a blanket stitch, that's not gonna look so good. Box zigzag works better with a satin stitch and the satin stitch is what is default selected for my mustache. Also, when you pick the blanket stitch and you do this tack down, it's gonna just look horrible. Like if I apply, you can see here, see that ugly tack down and then the blanket stitching, that's just no good. So you would wanna delete that or uncheck that box and hit apply, and there that's what the mustache would look like. Now let's look at the cover stitch options in our convert to applique or digitize applique options. We've got single, which is basically a straight stitch. That's if you were doing maybe a raw edge applique or something like that. We've got satin, which was what our default setting was. We have blanket, and we have zigzag. So you're kind of limited in choices, which is why 
as we get into advanced applique, that becomes attractive because in advanced applique, we can pretty much pick almost like any stitch that's on your sewing machine that you can play with with applique, we can do applique with. So that's a big, big thing for why you might simply want to do advanced applique. Then um, whatever you pick, I'm just gonna go back to satin here. You can adjust your spacing, you can adjust your width. And I wanna show you a really cool thing that I just, some of us, you know, we go in here and we're like, oh God, 0 0.016 inches. What is that in millimeters? Or let's just say I wanna make my spacing one millimeter apart. Here's something cool. I can type one on my keyboard and then MM after it and then click down here and it changes it one millimeter correctly. So I don't need to go back up here to my little measurement system. As long as I type my millimeters here, like if I want the width to be three millimeters, I can just say three mm and click in another field somewhere and there are my inches it's already converted it. I just thought that was worth the price of admission for this, <laughs> regardless if you wanna do applique or not. So when you're doing your satin, make sure that you select the tack down. Otherwise, we see we only have the three choices over here. One thing to remember here, if you deselect tack down and then select it again, you have to make sure you choose one of these tack down options from the list. Another thing that you can do in object properties under the applique tab is add fabric into your applique. And there's preloaded fabric in here. I have my own stash loaded, but sometimes I don't even focus too much on the actual fabric. I just look at it more like in color. So for instance, this Benertex list of apple butter, let's just pick like a brown and say, okay, and okay. And the fabric doesn't show up straight away if you don't have your show fabric or show applique fabric selected. So there we go. And then we can also go ahead and select our mustache. And when we change our color, let's find a little brown color down here on our threads list. This doesn't show, doesn't change these other colors in here, pink, which is the placement, our green, which is the cut line, and our purpley blue, which is the tack down. It only changes the cover stitch. Okay, so let's talk about when you might want to use different applique methods. So our mustache, we saw totally just down and dirty, click and convert it, right? But maybe you have something that might be a little bit more complicated and you might not be quite ready to do advanced applique, but you might need to manually digitize around something. So let's look at this. So let's look at a flower, for instance. And remember, I like to make this the size that I wanna make it before I do any digitizing. So I'm gonna make this like six inches. That looks good to me, okay. And then I'm just gonna manually zoom in on this, make it a little bit larger. Now I can do my magic wand digitizing for this flower. And if I did that, let me just show you what happens there. It has digitized the flower with the hole in it. But if I want to do this flower in layers, because when I do applique, I typically work in layers. So whatever is the furthest back appliques first, then other things go on top. This, if I now take my pointer and I go back to that applique drawer and I click convert to applique, and I got to tell you, I got to make this red or something so we can see it. There we go. This is going to stitch the outline of for placement and the inside for placement. And if I'm just looking to create this flower and then add a different color in my center, this might not be the best choice. So I'm gonna undo this and undo this, and let's digitize our applique. 
And this is simple. The left click, right click, left click. And remember, left click changes the direction or makes a point, and right click makes it roundy. So now there is our flower. Now I can come in and digitize the center. And maybe I want my center to be yellow. And then I'm going to left click, right click, right click, enter. And now I have a yellow center. So what's gonna happen in this case is placement, tack down, cover. Then I'm going to do my placement tack down cover of the yellow. And this gives me an opportunity. I can remove my layer underneath after this is all stitched out, depending on if I'm using fusible web or not, la 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 la. But this is also giving me the option to add the layers. Now there's another option when you do an applique, if you wanna cut a hole. And that is just going to kind of give you the same thing we did when we used our magic wand. So um, that's kind of like two layers um, or something like this might be appropriate for our digitized applique. Now there's another option that you might wanna go for here. And that's if we had like a little leaf back here. So. Let's just undo everything so we can get started here like this. Let's say you had a leaf and we're just gonna digitize this applique. There's a leaf. We can change the color to green so we can be reminded that that's a leaf. And now we can digitize around our heart. I'm just gonna remove my hoop here for a second. change our color to maybe red, have a nice red flower. Now, with two items like this, I don't wanna see a little bumpy satin stitch under here, right? So I can go ahead and select all by clicking my flower and my leaf, holding the shift key, or I can do a control A to select all, and I'm gonna remove applique overlaps. And now what you can see happened is it removed that cover stitching bump that we didn't want. So now advanced applique and this little bunny rabbit, that is the icon for advanced applique. And this can create dimension. It can also allow us to use, like I said already, pattern run stitches for our applique stitches. It also gives us a lot of opportunity to make a more sophisticated looking embroidery design. And this little bunny, if we look on here, has every bit of this bunny has been created with an open object tool. So like your straight line or your curved or squiggle lines, whereas the simple applique designs are done with connecting designs, that closed object tool. And Advanced applique also allows us, if we have a simple shape, but we wanna break it apart and maybe give it some texture by having two separate pieces of fabric, one side or the other side for dimension, it allows us to do that as well. This is the picture of the digital file for our exercise that we're gonna be doing. It's using a lot of decorative stitches. We're not limited, like I mentioned, to the satin, blanket, single, and zigzag cover stitches. We can now pick all different kinds of things. We can also embellish it with top stitching stitches that are built into our Bernina embroidery software. Here's an example of a more complicated item than we're going to be using today, but this is, you know, something to aspire to, something to think about when we look at some of, maybe we have some applique patterns that you have been wanting to do and you just didn't want to do them, you know, manually by machine or heaven forbid by hand. Now maybe we can look at some of these other things after we do today's exercise and think of 
and see them with new eyes, new ways to use this very creative tool in this Bernina embroidery software. All right, it's time to do this exercise. So a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to start with a new design. And if you don't know how to pick a new design, you just hit that little new blank page there. And we're going to do a couple things to our hoop. So first, we're going to right click on the hoop icon and change it to the maxi hoop because that's the size we're going to work in today. And another thing that you're going to thank me for this later is we're going to turn off automatic centering and select manual. And this way, when we create this, our stuff isn't going to be bouncing around in the hoop for us. Then we, um, you know, this is kind of like a personal preference thing. I really don't do this quite often, but if you do want to look at your design with the hoop orientation turned, whether it's because when we do like view to hoop, like right now I'm viewed to the hoop and it's vertical and long and our computer monitors are wide. If I do 90 degrees here and enter, now when I view to hoop, it enlarges everything just a little bit. So that would be a reason to rotate this like the Bernina instructions are saying. And now I'm gonna insert our advanced applique artwork. And it's gonna come in much larger than we probably need. And you can see that there. And so we're gonna reduce this 35% and hit enter. And now we can view to hoop again because it you know, was viewing it true view when we brought that artwork in. Now, under closer inspection, I can still see that this is still a little bit too big, so I'm gonna just tweak it and make it smaller and kind of wiggle this into the center hoop position and just making sure, and I can even use the arrows on my keyboard to adjust this, and now it fits in there. So ah, now we can get started. Now I had talked about briefly that when I do applique and I get ready to do something that's got like a lot more things in the hoop than just one color or one shape, I want to create my applique from the things that are furthest in the background to the things that are closer up. So when I look at this outline design, I kind of see that the stem is the furthest back or potentially the bud. And so that's how I'm recommending that we digitize this. And the instructions that you're getting in your email is that the bud of the flower is gonna be digitized first, and then we're gonna do the stem, and then we're gonna do the bud body here. So let's start by deselecting the picture and thinking about the ways that we're going to use our applique to do this. Now, we're doing our advanced applique exercise now, but that doesn't mean that we have to get all fancy and do this entire design with advanced applique because some of these things will work out quite nicely with our standard digitized applique method. So the bud, for instance, is just a very easy one that we can do with remove overlaps, like you saw me do with my little leaf and flower example. And so that's how we're gonna do that one. We could also do that with this leaf here. However, if we incorporate this into advanced applique, then it's going to stitch all of this stuff in a more cohesive way and we won't have a lot of back and forth color changes and things like that. So this flower and the little leaf over here, that's gonna be our advanced applique, but the bud is going to be our regular applique. So to set up for regular applique, we're, before we even select anything, we're gonna go into object properties and in your object properties, we're gonna make a few adjustments. And the first one starts with a tack down line that is going to be a single line. Then we're choosing blanket stitch as our cover stitch. And remember our fantastic little trick here, we're gonna type in 2mm and select another box. And that's gonna mean that that's two millimeters of a width we're setting. And then we wanna make sure that we deselect offsets locked to cover offset. 
And then we want to make sure that the cover offset is set to minus 0 0.039 and apply and OK. So now that means when I digitize my bud, it's going to automatically be the adjustments that I want. So we need to use this tool here under our applique drawer called Digitize Applique. And the same principles apply as a lot of other digitizing. Left click sets the line, right click curves it along a curve. And if we want to change directions, we left click, right click, right click, left click. And see how I'm clicking below our little bud leaves? And that's simply because I want this bud to be tucked under my leaves when I digitize them. Now press enter on the keyboard. Now at this point, if you needed to reshape, you could, but you know what? I'm totally happy with this. And now we're going to digitize our stem. And so I'm going to go away from digitize applique and go to digitize, open object, and I'm gonna pick my stem stitch and I'm gonna select color number three. And I'm just gonna do a little bit. I want my stem to go just under this line here, right click and then left click so it goes up into the bud like that and then enter on the keyboard. And you can see my stem. Now it's time to digitize this lower part. And I want this to also be green. So I'm gonna make sure that I still have green selected. And then I'm going to go back to my digitize applique under the applique drawer. And there we have it. Now the only thing I would have to say is I probably should have remembered to take my bud and make that like a purple color, but I can do that right now. So ta-da, we have digitized a bud and a stem. So once that's complete, it's time to start thinking about all of this advanced applique. So I'm gonna zoom out so we can see our whole piece here. So we could do, we could go around the flower and everything and have all of this be a very sophisticated applique design. But I think one of the nice things that about picking this design is that it gives us some time to think about the whole process. If we were to do our advanced applique with this whole thing, we would digitize around each line that you see here. And when we apply the advanced applique, we would have so many different little pieces that are in this bit. And I'm not sure if, if it's worth it. So I think it's probably a better idea to do the outer flower, this leaf, these other two leaves, and then the little veins as one applique. And then we're going to do our inner flower and the center as an applique with an additional center applique to it. So we're working in layers. So the first thing that, you know, we'll stitch after the bud would be the leaves and their veins, and then the flower outer, and then the inner flower and the inner circle. And um, this is just an easier way to do it. But like I said, I think I started this by saying a hundred different people teaching you this will probably teach you a thousand different ways. So um, let's talk a little bit about advanced applique. Now you'll notice that it's grayed out here and that's because advanced applique isn't selected until you actually have something to select and we haven't created anything yet. So the way that advanced applique works is by going to our digitizing drawer 
and selecting the open object tool. This is just like if you were going to click a little squiggle, if you were gonna make anything like that. This is not really a new tool if, if you've been using your software for a while. Okay, so we're going to make sure that we have the stem stitch selected and color number three selected. And we are going to digitize the stem that is connected to the leaf. And that's right here. So we're gonna click with a left click, right click and left click so it's tucked under that leaf. And then we're gonna press enter on the keyboard. Now we're gonna select the closed object tool to digitize the leaf that's connected to the stem. keeping the green color selected, but now a single line. And now we're going to start at the corner and left click, right click, left click, right click, right click, and then enter. Now we're going to go back to our open object tool and we're gonna digitize around each leaf that's tucked under these flowers. And see how I'm going under the flower like that? That's crucial because if we don't have overlaps on this, then it's very possible that our design is not gonna come out right. We won't be able to engage that auto applique. But this time I should have made sure that I, sa I saved it as a single line. So I want to make sure that I have my open object selected with single line when I do this next leaf. Now it's time to pick a different color and let's go for color number 33. It's more of a spring green and we are going to be using a back stitch. So let's go to our open object, make sure that's selected. And then back stitch is down here, right there. And now we don't need to worry too much about how we digitize these veins because we're gonna use Blackwork Run. And why would we use Blackwork Run? Well, Blackwork Run allows us to just kind of crazily like, digitize these lines and then Blackwork Run keeps us on track and will reorder it for us when we engage that tool. So I'm going to start by clicking all of my offshoots first. Enter. And see how I'm kind of crossing over that middle vein. Now, as I digitize this one, I wanna make sure that they're all touching. Okay, so that, one's cr that one looks good. And now we're gonna move down, oopsie, <laughs> to this one. And even though my picture isn't perfect, I want to make sure I'm crossing over with my veins. Also, I am making sure I'm tucking this under my flower there. Now I'm going to move the on over here to our final leaf and the veins. There we go. And then finally down this vein. Now there's no inspector that's gonna come over here and make sure that I was on the line correctly. But if I go over here to my blue select arrow and I select 
this um, leaf outline that I just did, it kind of looks like I could sort of spend some time cleaning up this leaf. So I selected a node and deleted it. And now I'm going to move that curve node closer to the line. I just, I got a little sloppy. I think I can't digitize while I'm talking at the same time. Probably that's it. But I moved that closer to the line there. And I probably could do this on my other pieces. And I'm just cleaning this up because I really didn't even see these indiscretions until I was close, to, close up doing the veins. Okay, that looks good. What do you think? Huh? All right, so now let's do this one will be my last one that I do. I'm still in um, reshape mode, so I can just click on this and my little nodes show up. And I can get those closer. All right, that's good enough for me, except I see an extra node that I want to delete. And now our selector arrow gets engaged. So working with switching gears back to our veins, we want to apply black work run on these because if I show my jump stitches here, and I get out of this mode, see all of those little green jump stitches? Well, we want to eliminate those. I deselected my artistic view so that we could see those jump stitches. And to see the jump stitches, you might also make sure that you have the show connectors button pushed in. But nonetheless, I am going to select my, hold down my control key on my keyboard <clears throat> and select all of these little green veins. And once I have one grouping together, I go to the edit toolbox drawer, select black work run, and then select by left clicking my entry point. And look, those jump stitches went away. So I simply need to do the same thing for the little groupings of the other veins. Hold down control, select, 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 black work run, click on the entry point and select. So now we're gonna zoom to fit and now it's time to deselect and select and digitize the outer petals. So I'm going to simply start by using my closed curve object tool under my digitizing drawer. And I'm going to select color number five. And now I'm going to digit and now I'm going to digitize around the outer petals beginning with a left click at the indent of the outer petals and right clicks around the edges of the petals. And then we're going to press enter to generate the stitches. And if we need to zoom in to do so, let's do so. and then enter to set the point. And if you need to, you can select the reshape object to adjust any of the lines that you don't like. Now we want to do some, a little bit of fancy things. We want to actually adjust the leaf stitches and that would be this leaf by itself, this leaf by holding down control and clicking and holding down control and clicking on the other leaf. But make sure that you have your blue selector icon selected when you do this. So there we go. All of our leaves are selected. And now we want to right click on pattern run, which is down here 
on our outline choices. It's the last choice. I'm going to right click on that. And from this drop down menu, there's pattern run, that's what I want, but there's select here. We're going to click on that. And from the drop down menu here, we're going to choose quilting. And we're going to choose A312. And it's this design here. Click OK and apply. And now OK. And then you can see that we have a brand new design for our leaves. Now we want to change the stitches on the outer petal, and that's the red that's here. That's this design here. So under outline type, we can actually select the drop down menu here and choose pattern run. And we're going to go to Bernina V5 from our selections. And we're going to select NP00528. Which is this one here, which is this one here. And now we click OK, Apply, and OK. And now it's time to apply advanced applique. And I'm going to start by showing all. And then we're going to find our advanced applique under applique. And we're going to select the design. Now it might be hard to see a white grid on a white image like this. So let's hide our image. And we might even want to hide our grid by selecting it. If you have a hard time viewing white on ECRU, we can go up here to design and background and display colors. And we can actually pick whatever we want. And we can do a color outside the hoop and a color inside the hoop. I'm just going to pick this color inside the hoop and go with a gray and say OK. And see that? It changes the color. So now, now that we're here in our applique folder, it's now OK to select our different elements. So we're going to go to Color Film, which is open here. But we want to select Show Objects. And we're going to start with the leaf. And we're going to go all the way down to the flower, holding down the Shift key. And now we've selected everything but that initial bud. And now do you see how Advanced Applique is highlighted? And now we can select that. And we've done a really good job because my entire design is covered in that white lace work, which means, hey, Gail, we're ready to do this for you. So we want to, and now if you didn't have sufficient overlap in any of these, you would have potentially a blank area that indeed you did want to cover up, but in this case, we're, we're okay. So now we want to add some fabrics. So what we're going to do by that is we're going to click on the place fabric and color in patches. Then you'll have a little plus sign. We're going to use just the standard Benner text folder and click that plus sign. And we're going to pull these from the Apple Butter collection. And we're going to start by placing the fabrics for the leaves and click on each leaf. So we're going to pick like a green and click on a leaf, a leaf, and a leaf. And now we're going to find like a red color and choose that for the flower. Then we're going to say back and then close. And let's view our work to hoop. And don't forget, we want to show our fabrics if we've added fabrics to this. And now if you want, it might be a good time to save your work. So I'm just going to say File, Save As, and I'm going to put this in my Software Inspirations folder and say Save. Now, 
it's time, now it's time to digitize the inner petals. So we're gonna do this by selecting the digitize drawer and the closed object curve. And we wanna be able to see through this fabric. So we're actually gonna not show the applique fabric and we're gonna bring back our show bitmap or artwork and we're gonna zoom in to see what we're doing here. So now for the inside petals, we wanna pick color number seven and we wanna pick our open object tool. Now here's the deal with this one. We want to make sure that we digitize the spokes of this line. So I'm gonna start with the curve and I'm gonna do a left click, right click, right click, right click, left click, left click, enter. Now I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around, making sure that I overlap properly so that I can have a nice closed in piece at the end. So I'm left clicking, overlapping, right click, right click, right click, right click, left click, enter, left click, overlap, left click, right click, right click, right click, left click, enter, left click, overlap, right click, right click, right click, right click, left click, enter. And then finally, left click overlapping, overlapping, right click, right click, right click, left click, enter. Now, if there's anything on here that you see that you need to readjust, kind of like my weird little pedal here, go ahead and do that. And now what we want to do is select all of these red or these number seven petals, which are right there. Ooh, and I did something weird here. So I probably need to select this piece. And let's reshape it. Let's zoom in. And I'm just gonna make another piece and drag it down here like that. And then say enter, there we go. And there's our piece. So now we wanna select it. And we're gonna apply advanced applique to this one as well. But first, we wanna make sure that we pick the right stitch. So we're gonna go to object properties, Pattern Run, Select, Bernina V5, and NP00515. There it is. OK, Apply, OK. And there's our cute design. And now for the center, we're simply gonna do our closed object. We're gonna pick yellow, and we're gonna do four right clicks. Right click, right click, right click, right click, enter. Select it. And now let's go to object properties, and let's choose Pattern run. So change our pattern set to Bernina V5. And now this time we're looking for NP00513. OK, apply, and OK. And now it's time to apply some advanced applique. So we're going to go to our advanced applique drawer. And we want to select number seven, which is color number seven. 
It's the flower with the petals and select advanced applique. And then make sure we place our fabric. And let's do a lighter pink for this one. And click on it. And then back and close. Let's, shoot, let's hide our artwork and show our fabric. Now let's select the center, which is our yellow. And let's choose advanced applique, place fabric. Let's pick a yellow, touch the center, back and close. We show the artistic view. We can see kind of how it's gonna stitch out. It looks great. And now the only thing is we have red leaves and we don't want red leaves. So we're gonna select our advanced applique pieces here, just like that. And we want to break apart. And now when we break it apart, now that has the green leaf and the red petals. Okay, so our piece is now ready to stitch. So there's one thing that I want to do really quick, and I want to print my templates that I'm going to cut out of fusible webbed back fabric. So I'm going to go up here to print preview, and I want to make sure under options, that I have applique patterns selected. I don't really care about printing a template, but I certainly want my applique patterns. And by selecting that, when I do my next pages here, you see the bud, the little leaves for the bud. There's my leaf, there's one leaf, there's another leaf, there's my center. Next page is one of my flowers, and then my other flower. So this is how I'm going to do my pieces. I'm going to fuse fusible web onto the back of the fabrics that I'm choosing for this project. And then I'm going to cut these out with my scissors. And then I'm going to do my embroidery. And it's going to be cute, fun, fast, and easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and print this now. And now it's time to stitch it out. All right, let's have a look at our advanced applique exercise. So here it is in my maxi hoop on my machine. And you'll notice that it has 20 colors. That's because there's a lot of placement, cover, placement, tack down, cover, stem, and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back and look at our design here. And there's a couple things that we can do if you want to consolidate it a little bit more. So let's go to our stitch out screen. And don't forget, you have to put your hoop on. And I'm using the maxi hoop. We can actually do our stitch sequencing and that will help a little bit. So now if we go down here, It will do our placement stitches and everything just perfectly. There we go. So if you made a little oopsie when you were digitizing or didn't incorporate this leaf or whatever, you can use this stitch sequencing button to make up for that. So now really we're stitching it out. <laughs> And you can see here, I'm using applique fuse and fix. It's like a fusible web product. It's got a shiny paper side, and then it's got a glue side. And I'm gonna press this down onto the back sides of my fabric. Then I'm going to take my templates that you see here that I printed off from my printer and cut all of those out, spray the back of them with a 505 adhesive spray so they stick and then place those templates on the fabric side of my fused elements. And this is, um, this is what we would call the cut and place manually method. And I have to tell you, I don't think it was perfect because when I finally finished this item, my cutting wasn't exactly accurate. So therefore I had some gaps when I went to do my stitching, but, that's why we always do a test. And I'm gonna repeat this process for all of the different colors. You can see here, there is my green piece. And I'm spraying these down, spray the wrong side of the template. 
and then place those into position on the green. And once you have everything laid out on your various colors, I'm using four different pieces of fabric. I have a dark red, a red, green, and yellow. You're gonna cut right on those solid lines. And I like to use my serrated curved Karen K. Buckley scissors for this. I just get a really nice cut. And then also when you print your template, you have to make sure it's gonna print at 100%. But there are my pieces. And I chose to use white thread that matches my background fabric to do my placement stitches. And I've peeled the paper off that bud and I'm sticking that down into position. And then it's time to thread with the red color to do the blanket stitching on my bud. And then it does the stem. Then it's gonna do our placement line for our little leaves, and we're going to stick those into place, peeling the paper first. Now this applique fuse and fix stuff is super sticky, so it really helps this applique process. And then we are threading it up with the white again, because now it's going to do all of our advanced applique portions. And you know, trying to cut that little thread, it's just a little tricky while the machine is moving. So we might want to wait for the machine to stop before we trim that little thread. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm gonna place, I'm gonna peel and stick all of my leaves and the flower. And the back leaf there. And placing the actual red flower was very weird because it's almost symmetric, but it's not really. So I kind of had to audition it in several different ways to make sure I was placing it in just the right spot. So you might want to fiddle with it just a little bit or pay more closer attention when you cut the template out to make sure that you mark exactly where each petal goes in your placement. And then in this case, I did this a couple different ways. And in this one, I had to do another little tack down stitch there for my leaf, but that was fine. And now it's doing the green and it's gonna do all the green for the leaves. And then as this stitches out, then we're gonna re-thread to red and it's gonna cover that red flower. Then it's gonna do the placement lines for the dark red center do the dark red center and the stitching and all of that stuff, then it's going to do the placement line for the center of the flower, and then it's complete. Okay, well, I hope you found this tutorial handy, and um, I hope you give it a try. And you know what? Be kind to yourself, because you don't need to start off with something that says it's advanced to actually doing a masterpiece. Take it in little steps. Try our exercises, and, you know, tell us what you think. Don't forget to incorporate the handouts that you're going to receive in your email and all of the other educational supporting items. Uh, you're going to get an interactive PDF with other useful links that are related content that we put together here at Bernina of Naperville in with the Bernina produced handout. So hopefully this will be really handy and get you using that software to its fullest. So thank you so much for signing up for our Software Inspirations, and uh, I'll see you again next month. If you want to see more tutorials like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville, and there you can like, comment, and subscribe.